The global wildlife trade is worth somewhere between 7 and 23 billion dollars, making it the fourth largest illegal trade in the world, only behind drugs, weapons, and human trafficking. Wildlife is captured, poached, and smuggled for all sorts of different reasons, ranging from their perceived medicinal benefits to displays of wealth and prestige, and even the exotic pet market. The span of the illegal wildlife trade is incredible. An animal can be poached in Africa, be shipped through a distribution hub in the mysterious Golden Triangle region of Myanmar, and end up on a European mantelpiece or a Chinese kitchen. The characters involved in this trade range from impoverished poachers to international criminal organizations all the way to corrupt business elites or even your average middle class person. Unfortunately, often the most targeted species are also some of the most vulnerable. And the fact that they are rare only seems to increase their value, which can take a species to the brink of extinction. This is why here at Mossy Earth we want to launch a series on this topic, which will run for five episodes. In this first video, we will provide you with an overview of the illegal wildlife trade. And then in upcoming episodes, we will focus on the five most trafficked species, how they are affected by this issue, and a set of lessons on what has and hasn't worked in the efforts to save them. So if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to follow this series. So let's start with what is wildlife trade and why is it bad? We can define it essentially as the extraction and exchange of any wild animal and plant resources. This can range from fish caught at sea to timber and unfortunately also to ivory and tiger skins. Just to give you a sense of the scale of the wildlife industry, we can take a look at this study in the Biological Conservation Journal, which estimates that in 2014, around 93 million wild organisms were traded globally. In general, all wildlife trade is damaging to wild ecosystems. For example, sustainable fishing within certain quotas can ensure the fishery's continued existence, but it also kills a variety of other threatened marine life, such as sharks and dolphins, through bycatch. However, the major issue with this trade is overexploitation, which happens when a species has been harvested in excess and the population plummets. It is then that regulation usually comes in to protect it. And it is at this junction that wildlife trade goes underground and becomes illegal wildlife trade. But before we dive into this dark world, I would just like to tell you a little bit more about us. At Mossy Earth, we work to restore nature across a variety of ecosystems, and you can be a part of this as well. We fund our projects with a monthly membership that plants native trees to capture carbon, rewilds habitats to support biodiversity, and protect underfunded species and ecosystems. To give you an example of this, in recent months our members planted native trees in Scotland, Romania and Slovakia, and on the rewilding side of things they supported the restoration of kelp forests, improved the habitat of the Atlantic salmon, and funded an expedition to save these critically endangered snails from extinction. To join, simply head over to mossy.earth, the link is in the description below. We would love to have you as a member. Now, let's get back to the video. The smugglers had ingeniously tried to cover the smell of the ivory by placing foil pepper and sprinkling powdered chili to distract sniffer dogs, but this did not work. Airport authorities seized the cargo and opened to find one of the largest consignments of ivory in recent past. There are complex illicit trafficking structures that facilitate the killing, transport and sale of prized species that actually resemble corporations in size. The United Nations World Wildlife Crime Report even includes a section on bribe distribution, with police officers, government officials, the military, and park rangers receiving the most bribes. It is hard to estimate the actual scale of the trade, but when it comes to the number of animals trafficked, seizure data can provide us with some insights. In 2017, there were approximately 20,000 seizures globally. This is the tip of the iceberg, and the real number could be 20 or 50 times larger than this which is why we will instead look at the specific cases of the five most trafficked species in an attempt to provide you with a clear example on how this world operates. But for now, let's start by getting some perspective by looking at the historical context. In the 18th, 19th and early 20th century, most of the wildlife trade focused on meat and luxury goods, such as skins and ivory. Think of tiger hunting, the fur seal trade, or the early ivory trade. This brought many species to the brink of extinction, and this is why in the 1960s, wildlife protection laws were created. Chief among these was the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, CITES for short. This agreement, signed by 80 countries, came into effect in 1975. It focused primarily on the species that supplied luxury goods to Western countries, 
such as elephants and tigers. However, as time passed, the rise of Chinese and Vietnamese demand led to animals that were previously safe also making their way onto this list. As of 2016, there are 182 states that have ratified sites, making it the largest global protection tool for trafficked species. It is essentially a tiered list, which tries to break down species by how endangered they are and how countries should handle them when it comes to trade. In Appendix 1, you will find species threatened with extinction and in need of immediate protection. So in this tier, we have tigers hunted for their skins, paws and penises, pangolins poached for their scales, elephants for their ivory, sharks for their fins, manta rays for their meat, tropical timber to make furniture and guitars, and cheetah cubs to have as pets, among many others. International agreements like these are a starting point, but ultimately meaningful change can only come from enforcement in each country, public awareness, and of course, behavior change. Each animal in this series will give us a unique lesson, as each one represents a different set of problems and a facet of the world of illegal wildlife trade. We hope you will find it insightful. Until next time. Cheers!